Live here at Susan Television on the bench today, the man who keeps the bench smoking. Kotu Secretary General Francis Atuoli is in the house. He's been very quiet the last couple of years. Where has he been? He's been even more quiet during the doctor's strike. Never. You Never. Are, you, come on. Never. Come on. I Never. haven't heard you say I was a th- the first person to issue a statement. What did you say? When, uh, when, when, when they clobbered the general secretary. Yes, with of, tear gas. Uh, with tear gas. That was on 29th. The same day, the same evening I was on television. Before I left for Geneva. What did you say? I said it was unfair. And unprocedural. And unlawful. Because it's a registered trade unionist. Mm. Elected. But for the doctor's strike in general, SG, you have, Kotu has been very quiet. We have said about it. Even before I left here, I had written a letter and we had given out the roadmap to finish that strike. It's only that immediately I went to Geneva. I don't know what happened because it was supposed to be overtaken by the right ministry. The right ministry is the Minister of Labor. Mm -hmm. It's the one that houses all experts on collective bargaining, on organized, on issues related to industrial relations practice in Kenya. But when I was in Geneva, I'm being told, oh, there is a certain committee has been, a very amorphous committee has been formed to look into a, such a strike with people without any experience in industrial relations practice in this country. But we have enormous industrial relations machinery to resolve that. And then the Ministry of Labor is most silent in this. They are non-existent. They are the people who are supposed to have taken over. And why haven't they? Uh, maybe somebody told them, because I understood, I don't know who was the chairman or what was happening, or people who came from other various, or uh, in the ministerial, they formed an ministerial committee. People who doesn't have some, some cannot be able to substantiate, to differentiate between a cooperative society or a circle and a trade union mm. issue, or trade union matters. So you're saying they are clueless? There was a big problem and a lot of confusion in that particular area. So Forget about what people are saying. There are some complica- complications. People cannot, they can, affordability is for every employer. There is inability to pay. Yeah. Can enter into an agreement to, uh, to improve terms and conditions of service of your members. And then the employer doesn't have much to do that. And he has signed. What do you do? You resist the agreement. Which yeah? they've tried to do, yeah. KPMD has tried to do, yeah. and the government is not listening. No, it's because, let me tell you, I don't want to go to that very much, because as I came back, I arrived here on, on third, on fourth, I was in constant touch with the Minister for Health, and we were trying to see, and also with the Labour Commissioner, to see whether we can come up with a, tri- a tripartite body to look into it. That tripartite body would have been representatives from the experts, the Federation of Kenya Employers, the Central Organization of Trade Unions, and then the parent Minister of Labour representing the government. Yeah. So that, and uh, if we have some uh, inequalities, or if we are unable to move, we get people like Ephraim Gare, who are Labour Commissioners, people who have worked in Geneva, and so on, or karaoke, the past uh, Labour Commissioners to chair, and we come up, with a way forward to present to the government to look into it. If there are some complications which require some amendments of law, the doctors are called and they meet with the, with, with the representative of the government okay. or the minister or the peers yeah. to tell them, look, here we cannot implement this under the current circumstances. So what was the decision for the creation of the tripartite? What was the decision? I, can't, I don't want to go into deep details now because it has been overtaken by events. Mm. Anything I propose, or we are now looking for another avenue. Because once the head of state, who is our worker number one, says he takes over, the Ministry of Labor is rendered impotent, the Ministry of Health has been rendered impotent, as to other central organization of trade unions who have been rendered impotent, we must look into other venues and uh, communication systems to make sure that we reach uh, the table of the head of state who has already made some pronunciation on the same. So now we have got to what we have done as COTU, we have written seeking an appointment. With the, with the head of state. Uh, yeah, that is the only where, where now matter lies, so that we can be able to update ourselves and we see whether we can be able to come up with other new venues to settle that. Because always, the first and foremost thing a trade union and employer enters into is a return to work formula. Mm. Yeah, and this must be a detailed one, entered into very honestly, sinti- with a lot of sincerity and uh, with a hope of achieving what both sides want on, based on give and take basis. 
the strike is almost into its first month. Absolutely. Right? But the other thing I want to tell you also, yeah. our affiliates are free and independent trade unions, like Doctors Union. KMPD. Yeah, it's, it's independent, and free. Koku. Uh, and Koku. They are affiliated to us. Namlo. Uh, but they, yeah, they are very independent. They have their own executive boards and so on. Once they resolute we are going on strike, Koku cannot tell them that don't go on strike. And once they want our assistance, we go there on invitation. Because they are free and independent, different constitution, different cognition agreements, and different uh, uh, CBAs and so on. So we can only get into it now at, a, at where we are, at a higher level, to see whether we can harmonize, get our way out, and get peace, and get a proper return, respectable. The one that government or employer or uh, or uh, the players who are now the trade union will have to accept. What is respectable? Because there's a CBA that's seven years old. That's not being uh, honoured. It, it might be honored. having, I'm, saying, I'm not saying a CBA that is seven years old. I've listened to Mengich here talking on this, uh, your channel on news yes. right now. Uh, but what defeats logic is that if there are some problems that require legislation amendment and doctors are told this, we want to align this with A, B, C, D. They will listen. For example, we have uh, had her saying, oh, county governments have interest in it. They cannot be this and that. Those are things that can be aligned by law. The law can be working out with the committee on labor in parliament, parliamentarians there in parliament. They can bring in either miscellaneous amendment and have one body to negotiate for all doctors in the country, including those employed by county governments, so that they can harmonize their demands, including those ones that... Uh, that uh, are, are, are there because the government is saying, oh, there are these ones, we can be able to employ them and pay them this much uh, different from these other ones. That all thing, the interns and so on, this can be harmonized all together. They have one document and one body of competent negotiators for on behalf of doctors, headed by professionals, advised by the Minister of Labor, and they come up with one document so that the, these problems will be resolved once and for all. But then, as she, let's face it, the government isn't listening. The doctors are adamant about this strike. Who is going to listen? Should health CS Susan Nakhon no, 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 should no, she no. resign? No, no, don't go there. When I've already told let's you. Let's go there. No, no. Should she that has been overtaken should by Should she events. resign? No, no, no. She shouldn't. Because why? When I came immediately, we were in touch. On 4th. And on 5th of this month, mm. I was addressing shop stewards. I told them I delayed because... I, 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 was, I was trying to find a way out as per how we can be able to get away with what is happening currently, how we can be able to resolve what is happening within the doctors' union and the confrontation between the doctors and their employer. But then immediately as we were trying to put our brains together, including the Labor Commission and everybody, the ministry, it was taken over by the high office. So now what we need to do yes. is, uh, because we respect the office of the president, and he knows why he's saying what he's saying, but we need to have uh, 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 diplomatic channels, normal channels of seeking an appointment with him. And you've asked. Uh, uh, and you have uh, sought. Uh, we have already written. And uh, even before we left, we had already written. Before I left for Geneva, we had already written because I, I understood the repercussions of the suffering of the people yeah. and so on. Because he came back from Guinea-Bissau yeah. and he told the doctors, you know what, there's no increase. It's because, you know, he's trying to be honest with what he has. But then that honesty must be turned into something like uh, an agreement or something like that. But you cannot compel the head of state not to take over any dispute if he's in the country. But what you can do as a citizen as, or as a responsible organization is to seek clear audience to find out ways and means, including what I've been telling you. Mm -hmm. And I've not several suggestions. For those people who understand the dynamics of industrial relations practice yes. and peaceful coexistence between employers and workers in any given country, uh, would be able to come up with an agreeable document. And let me tell you something. Mm. Currently, our president has a very high name internationally as far as workers are concerned. Because last year, last year in June, he addressed the International, Confer Inter 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 International Labor Conference in Geneva. And he spoke very well. And uh, f since we attained independence, not any president apart from uh, when Wamadwa 
uh, was the deputy, uh, the vice president, yeah. and he was sent by Kibaki to represent Kenya in his capacity as a representative of the president, but not the president himself. And William came to Geneva. So he has a very good international name and a very good rapport with the workers globally. But was he late in dealing with this doctor strike? Was he too late? No, it's because, you know, there were people to handle it, I told you. Which people? Even before he Which came Which people, in. SG? Yeah, of them, before the ministry. In charge of... Labor the... minister? Who has heard from the Labor minister? CS? Who has heard? No, it's because, you see, uh, what happened, and I've already told you, before I left, uh, we expected the entire mechanism of industrial relations and solving led by the Minister of Labor. Correct. But then somebody came up with a MOFAS. I, I don't know whether it was in the ministerial committee or something like that, with people who are not players or people who have never been able mm. to handle industrial So relations. there's someone who's incompetent in there? It's not a question of incompetent. It's a question of, uh, of, of, of missed opportunities, missed chances in administrative application. So what do you tell Cape MPDU? What do you tell Koku? What do you tell No? No, no, no right? currently, currently, they are in for it because they have got to fight and they are being supported by their members and they are united. And that is the work of a true trade union movement. What we need to do is to find out a solution. How do we get into where the dispute has been taken to? And the how can we... CBA. And also these... No, interns. the CBA and is money. just a document. And money for the, the authoritative. Where does authority come from? From the top. Yeah, and then that is where we need to be. And that is, those are the diplomatic channels we are trying to, to work on. Day 28, SG, is day 28. I mean, what, what is it going to take? And people you. are dying. Let, let, Kenyans it, are dying. Indeed, it is true. Indeed, it is true. Indeed, it is true. What can resolve that is what we are trying to look into right now. Indeed, it is true. We sympathize with the situation. It's not that we are celebrating. It's not that court is quiet. I spoke about it on 5th. I spoke about it on 29th. I spoke about it on 4th of this month immediately I arrived. And my office, equally, it was working on the same. My deputy, I was in that particular committee. My own deputy, very capable. So what we are trying to do is to find out a solution as Kenyans without blaming who and who and so on. But now you must know that in that, any dispute, be it land issue, be it what in this country. But once it has been taken by a head of state, now the Minister of Labor, the Minister of Health, the Central Organization of Trade Unions, and the other players, uh, you, are, you, are, you have got to seek uh, audience with him. Why? Because he receives more information than what we receive. He has a, an, a working office that uh, is complete with advisors, with everybody. So you, you cannot just push and say so and so is wrong, so and so is wrong. And that's what normal, uh, normally happens in every, even including developed countries. So you think now you've been silenced because the head of state stepped in? It's you... not a question of being silenced. Uh -huh. It's a question of enormous industrial legends machinery being followed to the latter. And they are there with us in black and white. As for how once can, today, if you are sacked, we will, we will look into terms and conditions of your employment. We cannot say, oh, uh, 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 citizen or mid, uh, this media house has sacked uh, uh, Jeff Koinang, a friend of Francis Atueli, mm. unfairly, without looking into those terms, whether one or something was left out into it. Even if you went to court, they will look into details. It's not a question of politics and what have you. It's a question of professionalism input, and that is what we are looking at. Okay. Looking ahead in this strike, other than that audience you seek with the head of state, what else do you want? What else do you think they want? You know very well, the treasury, people who want and focus on taxation, people who look into the affairs of our economy, people who handle issues on a daily basis that concerns Kenyans, as far as working men and women in this country are concerned, are in government. And these are the people that understand what happens from each and every quarter. And until and then we meet and sit on the table and see how we can come out. It would not be so easy, it would not be very quick, but we must find a solution out of it as Kenyans with sober mind, sober approach, and uh, look into what we have, what yeah. we don't have. But the president says he has no money. He's trying to be candidly clear on what he has. But how do we turn that into a paper and we sign? 
Yes, you have said there's no money. Or how do we convince? Or how do we get a way out of it? He's trying to be sincere. Really? Me, I would like some. Oh. Yeah, he's trying to be sincere. There's, or, there's money to, re, to uh, refurbish State House, right? There's 900 million. But let me tell you. There's money to refurbish the deputies. Uh, but calculate if you had a pen and everything and you calculate. Is that amount 900 million? Can it pay all doctors in Kenya? It's a start. Uh, no, no, no. It's a start, SG. Let, let's look at, look at a bigger picture. Not small things. And even that was delayed. That state house was becoming a, a, a moribund. It was be, somebody required to go there like that, to modernize. I don't know whether you have gone to the, these other places and see where, what happens and so on. <laughs> a really young president like William Samuel Ruto. He wouldn't like to see the state house that, uh, where Mzee um, Jomo Kenyatta was uh, and you had your, your grandpa, Koinaga, is still the same thing. <laughs> and then he said, I don't know, it is a lot of fun to do this and that. <laughs> uh, other areas of our uh, development is taking shape yes. and so on. But now it depends to this. Can it, if it is done this way, bring our people together? I've given you a very sound suggestion. I don't know whether you are noting. I, I, can we be able to come up with a legislation uh -huh. which can harmonize those employed by county governments, those employed by government, those employed in the private sector, those, uh, so that we can have a document that if you call the doctor's union to discuss with, all of you based on that. And when you append your signatures on that document, it affects even those doctors who are in other places to bring harmony and peace for the future prosperity in that particular profession. Yeah, but they signed a CBA in 2017. Nothing happened. To let me ask, you, let me ask you, 20, from 2017 to now, how many? Yeah. Seven. Yeah. How many change in economic dynamics have taken place or changes have taken place? And even if I gave you a salary two years ago, it's still the same salary. With a lot of, you know, even if they were paid at that particular time, and the doctors are trying just to be honest, they, 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 they should be now working on a third CBA. Yeah? Mm. Leave alone of that one 2017, because a CBA is supposed to be in life for only two years. From 2017 to now is how many years? Seven. Yeah, seven years is about three new CBS. So don't base very much on that. But though it's a document officially signed, to it doesn't matter which government. Yeah. It must be honored. It's binding. It, yeah, it's, it's binding. It's just like uh, the, 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 the international agreements we have exactly. with other countries. We okay. cannot uh, create a departure and run away for it. Okay, let's but inability to pay must be there. But we must also be told how and if it is there like that. What do we do or when? Uh, those are some of the small things which has been now overtaken for, from us and we are trying to reach there. Okay. Let's switch gears and we wish you good luck as you get your audience with the president. Thanks. Speaking of the president, you wrongly predicted. Mm. In fact, your words on this very bench. Yeah. He said William Samuel Ruto will never be president. Absolutely. You said that. You are correct. But let me tell you something. You know, I want you to understand it very well. Always when people are going either for... Uh, uh, in a competition, they always say the best performer or the best candidate may win. win. So well, as you talk like that at the back of your mind, you say, let the best, on you know, this particular issue, and I don't want to go into it for very much or, or post-mortem about it, because uh, it has also been overtaken by events currently where we are. <laughs> William was smart, and his smartness grew higher as Bawata was talking. Because he had a team. Maybe we didn't have such a team in What do you mean? We were meeting at your house every day, every other day. You can how in, many schools? In, in Ildama. How, 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 how many schools can be around and so one school taking children to university and everywhere? And there are so many schools around and people are meeting in the same curriculum. Everything is the same. So that like, meeting at my place every day does not mean that he was not also meeting. Or what type of things he had put in place. He had a wonderful, I can tell you, and I don't talk for him, I don't talk for uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, I don't talk for, at that particular time, and I don't want to go there much because I'll tell you the reason. He had a wonderful logistic and strategic committee to propel him to State House. Why? Because all what we were saying, be it in public rallies, everywhere, in our own private, they were monitoring, seething, forecasting, collecting data based on it, maybe from, uh, from uh, a world level. 
And the Holy Spirit assessing themselves after they have done all this. And then they say, this what I told is saying, does not match with this what is happening here. Mm. Now to overcome, and there are professionals there and politicians, and even themselves in their team as leaders after campaign. And then they say, this is what we can do it this way, this one we can do it like this way. And Mark, you at that particular time, maybe you have met in Kajado once. And these people are assessing you always. They wait you to say, William Samuel Ruto will not win. And then they come and say, true, if you come here, these people will be here. They have moved, they are here. This is what I told is saying, is what is here, I'm still here. Can we get, how do we push here from here? In his own area, how many votes can we be able? Okay. And, uh, and, and, and they succeeded getting the right answer more than what we used So while they were working day and night, you people were asleep? We were not asleep, but we were, you know, what happens on this? I've told you, but the may the best candidate win. Because he has put proper mechanism in place. We might have put a lot of mechanism in place with a lot of hope. We have a president, we have Ascaris around us, yeah, they, we they, have everybody. Deep state. Yeah, we have a deep state. We go and sleep. And these chaps, they say, we must go there. And this is our aim. Who, when they meet in the evening, you produce your report, you produce your report, you produce your report, you compare with what Atuela has said in a rally or somewhere else. And then you, Atuela is overtaken by events for the purposes of strengthening your position to win elections. So William Samoy was smart, and I salute him from wherever he is. Yes, you saluted him, but you were... I very... was the first person. No, you were not. I was. You were very I quiet. I was. You were quiet. After Supreme Court, I was the first person from as me or ask anybody else. And I said I'm going back to the office. Of course, I was not looking for any position. Okay. Either to become a deputy president or either to become... I went there because my executive board has resoluted that that can be the channel to exert pressure on any government on behalf of workers. So as I went back to the office, and I said, I, I even said, I said, Tuko Katika Imaya, William, after the, con because let me tell you, Jeff, and I've told you on several, several occasions, it's better a thousand times to have a bad government than not to have one. Go to Sudan, our neighbors here had an office, of our regional office. Mm of East, uh, larger trade union federation of Eastern Africa. In Khartoum. In Khartoum. Mm. Go there. There is nothing. So once once has been confirmed by the Supreme Court as your president, and you are a responsible citizen, and you want to accept people to move towards direction, and people do their businesses freely, give that particular person support. And he had a manifesto. Let that his manifesto be implemented by him. Okay. So you congratulated him? I congratulated him. I was the first person. But at the same time, you were so close to Baba. Yeah. And, and probably still are. You're still close to Raila Odinga. Obviously. Because why? For two reasons. Raila is not only politics. He's my brother-in-law. Nobody doesn't know that. He's my brother-in-law. Even if we disagree... For example, I moved first from Azimia to Soda. I was the first person to congratulate William Ruto. And all our people who remained behind said, these are two only, oh, the one, this and that and so on. Came up with what now I'm hearing, politics of betrayal, politics of what? I said, we have been defeated, my friends. <laughs> yeah? And we cannot go back and say we are reclaiming again. Yeah? All stages of confirmation of a new president and so on has been carried out. And fairly... There is something we might have not done, but I don't want to go there. Let me tell you, I don't want to go to that debate. Why don't I want to go to that debate? I have never seen, me, I have seen all successions. I saw your grandpa, Mzeko Inange. And I used to, when we were going out to Nakuru, he drives at night. He gets to State House at yeah. night. Yeah. I saw him. I met him. Myself. I have seen all those successive governments in this Republic of Kenya. But I have never seen what President William Samuel Ruto has done. Which is what? Raila Mododinka, who is my brother-in-law, he is a member of ODM, a leading Azimio leader. But you know, when Ruto gets information, Raila will to become the chairman of the African Union. He just says, Toa yo mesa, toa yo viti, kila kitu, nipe jacket, he's out without formal agreement without handshake, without anything.
taking everybody unaware, including those in Azimio, including those in the ODM, including those in Kenya Kwanza. Kenya Kwanza moves first to support the move. We at court, we say that is a good move. But there we was create a, more peace. There was, we a hand, a statement. there was a handshake in, in uh, Entebbe, or you, uh, somewhere in Uganda. That, they met. No, that was not a handshake. By the they were looking. Uh. I've heard that somebody from Djibouti wants to come up. Yes, and, today. Uh, today. And there's the Somali that, uh, woman. Yeah. Who is his proposal? And William is intelligent. He said before I get out of East Africa, I want to know who will have to propose my candidate. So they had to go to Kampala. That was not a handshake. It was sort of a handshake. No, no, no. You saw them together no, it smiling. Was, it, it, it was looking for ways and means. If it was a handshake, then what, 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 what are the parameters and agreement of the handshake? Of what they want to do, such as the one they did with Uru Kenyatta. That this is what we want to do, this is what we want to do. Mm. There's nothing like that. And nobody invited William. He decided as a Kenyan that if this is a Kenyan, they will oppose to me. It's not a question. That we want to play it he safe. Could, he could have gone alone. He didn't have to take Baba with him. No, he could have gone alone, yes. But the person who would propose the candidate must ask the candidate questions. We have now a proposal. We have a seconder. We have various supporters on the efforts William Samuel Ruta has made. He has taken over the whole of the West Africa and Central Africa republics. You cannot now go there and say because he's a French-speaking country and I'm a candidate, they will give me elections. Uh, they will vote for me. Mm. He has moved more than that. He has, he, he, all in the, the, the region, the eastern, the larger eastern region, he has finished with Burundi, Rwanda, and so on. Our threat would have been Tanzania. But I can tell you, for, and on his efforts, Jakaya, he not, yeah, yeah. Jakaya Kikwete wanted it. Yeah. So what I'm telling you, I've never seen somebody like that. And he's not saying because he wants somebody to support him. He's not saying he's supporting Raila Molodinga because he wants somebody to support him. Well, that would have been on a handshake or something like that you would have read about it. Do you think Baba's going to get it? He will get it. Hmm? He will get it. With this effort William is making, hmm. I'm telling you he's going to get it. What if he doesn't? No, if he doesn't, he's a Kajan. He will still remain, come back home. What would have to happen? I've told you this country is bigger than all of us. If you get one favor from a head of state to give you support, does not mean that if you lose that favor, well, the country will go down under. And always don't expect the country to go down under. Even William, if he went under, he will not go alone. He will go with all of us. So always wish them well, wish whoever might have been defeated well, have a cohesive, one united country that you can pick on and enable them to do whatever you want to do. And that is the policy of this young man called William Samuel. When's the last time you spoke to your brother-in-law? Uh, I think it should be, I think it should be about two weeks or three weeks uh, or a week ago. Yeah. What did you say? I mean, did you talk about the candidate? No, no, we didn't. Uh, but I told him because I had heard from uh, my colleague from Nigeria saying the Nigerian government has already resoluted to support him. And the minister for labor in Nigeria went public in our caste meeting and said our government is going to support Raila Molo Odinga. So that's the information I had heard from, from a person mm -hmm. who had gone to that conference. And I called him, said, my brother-in-law, congratulations, the Nigerians will be supporting you. When's the last time you spoke to the president? Other uh, than writing a uh, no, letter? No, recently to... when he was in Kakamega. Oh, okay. Yeah, recently. When he's in Kakamega, he, he's, he, has, he, has simply, he allows us to sit with him. He's an opinion shaper. He wants to hear from all of us. And uh, that has endeared him very much to Kakamega leaders where I was born. And uh, he doesn't want to have dinner alone without any leader who is around in Kakamega without being around him. Uh, so he's accessible. Cannot say it's not accessible unless when he's very busy. And uh, I can tell you what. Let me give you a good example he did to us. I met him for the first time after he has won election on 1st of December. And then uh, with the team of the Western leaders. And uh, after that, I asked him now if I could bring the larger number of workers uh, to to also to meet him and make their suggestions and appeals and uh, share their experiences with him. So he gave us on uh, 14th, I think, of February, we met him. 14th of February, we had a couple of issues that we asked him, of which all implemented. One was to preside over last year's Labor Day, of which he did very successfully. It was the most successful 
there, but then he came. The second one was to come to Geneva. We invited him uh, through the Director General of the International Labor Organization, uh, Mr. Uh, Brother Gilbe. He went, he addressed the conference to Geneva, and he gave a wonderful speech. And then the third one, the fourth one or so, was to open the African Region Trade Union Conference, which was attended with almost a thousand delegates from all over Africa and uh, abroad. He had an opportunity to meet our global uh, <clears throat> general secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation. And uh, when I was there, I told, I asked him quietly, Your Excellency, as such a conference in every country it has been, it's not only left to workers or employers, government comes in with a token to give support. You see all these people, and uh, also to show their solidarity with workers because under tripartism arrangement we are three is uh, government employers and workers so uh, what are you giving to this he said i will send my donation i said yes if you did so it will reduce our uh, our burden with the, did with, send it? with the hotel is he fulfilled he sent 10 million shillings to the hotel uh, to reduce uh, that. That one he fulfilled. So all things that we had organized for him to do. The other thing, we had an opportunity on housing levy because that is when we had started that. We asked him during Labor Day, please come and explain to us. He went to State House and he came and he met all general secretaries. And now you're being taxed 1.5%. You know, it's because uh, some of the things that are happening in this country, which has been happening elsewhere, becomes alien to us because we have been silent and quiet in our own cocoons without knowing what is happening. Go to Algeria. They went the same route to finish slums. You must have a master plan to finish slums. What matters, are you represented on that particular board? Mm. That implementing board, we are on that board, uh, legally, in the, when they were coming. And your workers agree with it? I mean, they have no problem? It might not be that everybody would agree, but then we, uh, it is, this, this is during its teething problem. It has got to start, go on, and so on. If it reaches somewhere and our representative on the board I say this is what is happening, can we be able to resist either to look into, the, to look into it this way and that way, then we will, at the, when we reach there, we'll have to look at it from that way. It is not everybody who can agree. Currently, even people are not agreeing to pay taxes. And you remember during Kibaki's time, I supported the government. I said there are tax events in people, people who are not take, paying taxes in this country and so on. And no any country can spare economic growth or bring in in any meaningful development. If people are not paying taxes, in the developed world, half of your salary goes to taxation. True. Yes. But you see your tax dollars at work. Absolutely. And that is what... It's Roads, so schools, hospitals. That is the work of the press. That, that's where you come in now, to interrogate. That is the work of the press. The press should not be living for MPs. They leave it for the trade unions. They leave it for other people. That is the work of the press. That is the work of the press, Jeff. That is the work of the press. <laughs> <That's Jeff. laughs> I want to take a break right now. <laughs> Come back and talk about Luya Unity. Or lack thereof. <laughs> would, you I, once said you would unite all of Louis. I will Asia. answer you that. Huh? I will answer you that. It's the work of the uh? the press. Uh, the press. <laughs> <laughs> Keep tweeting at Coinangaja as she's coming out guns blazing at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.